Hey, what's one of the things that you see most commonly in younger kids that come to see you in clinic? Say about two years of age, it's one of the most common. Yeah, I think it's a great question. We see a large number of kids with a condition we call trigger thumb, which is uh, not actually a, a genetic or condition you're born with, it's something that you develop shortly after birth. Do you, do you see the same kids? I do, I will tell you, almost any time someone comes in to see me with a thumb problem and they're two or three, it's almost always trigger thumb, almost always. Um, do you feel that that's associated with injury or does it just show up? You know, it's interesting, a, a lot of times a parent will associate um, the trigger thumb, which essentially is a child who often comes in with their thumb stuck just like this, not 100% of the time, but a lot of times. And they'll say, I first noticed it when little Johnny fell down. Yeah, true. And then it's fun because then parents will actually look back and they'll say, oh, we looked at the hand tracing that we did last year. And they'll notice that the kid's thumb is down at that point, too. So sometimes it's been around for a lot of time, for a long time. Have you ever seen it from birth? Do you think it ever comes up with birth? I really don't think it's present uh, from birth, uh, although some families will insist that it has been. So I'm, I'm not, not going to argue. So if you have a child come in with that position, do you get x-rays? Do you need an MRI? What do you do to make the diagnosis? Yeah, great question. I will tell you, I never get x-rays. I try to minimize getting x-rays in kids, especially. They, oftentimes they'll have them because um, the injury component to it and, and sometimes parents think the thumb looks dislocated because it can be so far down and the thumb MP joint, which is this knuckle down here, it looks really extended. So there's some concern. So I'll look at the x-rays for sure. We'll go over them together, but I don't send them. I try to minimize, oh, excuse me, um, getting x-rays in kids. Do, do you? No, totally yeah. agree. Okay, so let's say you have a two-year-old and mom and dad come in with the child and they have a trigger thumb and it's been present for six months what, what do you what do you tell they say okay dr wall what do we do next good question i have that conversation every day um but i you know i talk about the range so in adults when we have triggers and it's actually clicking which is very different than in kids um, we oftentimes um, provide injections like cortisone shot i don't do injections in little kids they don't like it i don't even know if it works but i don't offer it because i don't want to terrorize children um, and so we don't do that. We talk about stretching. Um, so sometimes if they're popping, sometimes they will pop intermittently. We'll sometimes talk about stretching and doing splints at night. Um, the number of families that take me up on doing nighttime splinting for their two-year-old is very, very minimal, but I would absolutely let them do if they want to. And then the other option is to do surgery where we do a little release. And so do you, how do you do that? And how do you talk about surgery? Yeah, I agree with you completely. I don't think splints, I mean, splints are an option. I don't think they're a great option in a young child. The literature would guide us, the medical literature would guide us and say that these do get somewhat better over time, but they probably don't resolve. And so in the United States, um, if a patient has had a trigger thumb, especially the locked position for a long time, and a long time means different things to different yeah, families, absolutely. I might offer a simple surgery. Is that your same approach? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think it's funny because parents always like to ask, well, wh if we leave it alone, what will be the repercussions in the future? And I would just say, I have a couple of things. I'd love to hear yours. Um, I will tell you that sometimes this knuckle can hyperextend more as the kids are trying to get the thumb out of the palm to hold big, bigger objects. I've never had an adult come to me with that problem, um, but I did have a 12 year old come to me. I love this story. He had had it when he was two. He'd had it for 10 years and he came back and he had quite a flexed thumb and he struggled typing on the computer. And that has been the one functional report that I've, I've heard. So, yeah, totally agree. It. For most kids, I think the, it's, not, it's certainly not the worst problem in the world. And there's no way we would ever say you must have this surgery. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about the surgery is it's, it's a five-minute surgery. It does require a general anesthetic. So the child goes to sleep for five minutes. We do a surgery that is really simple. It's really safe. And it cures the problem forever. We don't expect recurrences, right? Yeah. And I will tell you that I don't really say I cure or fix anything when we do surgery, but this is probably the one surgery that I feel most definitively that we take care of a problem and I haven't had to redo one. And how do you talk about what we're doing with surgery to the family? What do you say? Absolutely. So the reason the thumb is stuck down is the tendon, which I tell kids it's like the rope that bends the thumb down, has a little band over it. And so there's a swollen part. And so the swollen part can't extend. So it is the tendon or the, the rope that's the problem. But what we do is we make a little incision here and we cut the band. So then that releases. And then the tendon is not, we don't do anything to the tendon, but then it can glide back and forth. And then you get two stitches, a little bit of numbing medicine. I think we disagree on what we put them in after surgery, um, slight disagreement, but I usually put like a little tiny cast and they can run around and then two weeks later, take it off and we're finished. 
Yeah, and some kid will use the thumb. Some kids will use the thumb like normally, almost right away. Mm -hmm. Other kids baby it for a while, but within a month, every kid is using the thumb like normal. Yeah, absolutely. And then that little nodule that everyone complains about that goes away too over time. Yeah, it takes some time, but goes away. Yeah. Trigger fingers are a little mm -hmm. less common, um, and we have a slightly different approach. Any thoughts? Yeah, I think the first thing is that it's an older kid, so it's not two to three is in the thumbs, which can be a little bit more, but classically two to three. This is more like seven to nine-year-olds um, where the fingers click and they get stuck, and sometimes they have to pop the finger out. Yeah, yeah. agreed. And um, similar approach, sometimes we'll try splinting, mm -hmm. which can Agreed. be helpful. More likely in that More case. likely to try yeah. splinting. If that helps, wonderful. If it doesn't, there is a relatively simple surgery. Somewhat of a different surgery than we would offer for an adult with the same issue, but still a really good option in the rare, rare case of a trigger finger in a child. Yeah, same thing, sort of small incision in the palm. I will say one thing we probably add to it, there are two ropes that go to the fingers to bend them down, so two tendons. One of them splits in half, and we usually take part of that. It decreases the amount of sort of tendon tissue in that area. And we think that there's probably some irregularity of growth potentially that's um, causing it to catch. So that kind of gets rid of that component. Would you agree? Love that. Totally agree. And uh, I think that's about all I know about trigger fingers it and is. trigger thumbs and yeah. kids. Absolutely.